In this video, we're going to look at Nick's model's design. Just before I define that, I want to give the context of this data set here. So I've got a team of rugby players, and I just want to know their work rate and how it changes across five different matches. And work in this context is a, let's take that as a, uh, as a proxy for some GPS metric, whether that's high speed running or distance covered or something along those lines. So that would describe a repeated measures design. So these are the within subject effects. But I can also drill down a little bit further and I can analyze my team with respect to what position you play. So do you play forward or back? And how does your position affect how much work you do across those matches? So now I've also got a between subject design. So hence it's called mixed model. So I've got within and between subject effects to, to account for. I'm just gonna show some example uh, data here to, to further illustrate the, the point. So our two main effects are match number and how that affects work rate and position and how that affects work rate. And essentially, because they're main effects, we're gonna look at them as uh, independent of each other. So in this example, match number does not affect uh, work rate. And equally, um, position, so whether you play forward or back, also does not affect how much work you do uh, in a match. In this example here, match number doesn't affect how much work you do, but whether you play um, back or forward does, so backs do significantly more than forwards. In this example, match has an effect on how much work you do, but not position. And here, both have an effect on how much work you do. Now, if we take this example, and again, we're looking at those main effects as independent entities, if we want to know if there's a difference in work rate between match one and two, so the average of these two, and again, noting that, that um, we're ignoring position, the average work for um, match one would be somewhere around about here, and, and likewise, match two would be about here. So really, there's no significant effect on, on match and work rate. If we look at um, uh, forwards and backs, and again, noting that we're disregarding what match is, well, the average work rate for um, forwards is going to be somewhere around here in, in the middle, and, and so too is that for the backs. So we'd reach the conclusion that there is no effect on match number or position on how much work you do. But clearly, there is something going on here. And that's the third measure that's available through this mixed um, methods approach. And that describes an interaction between these two main effects. And if we wasn't to report that interaction effect, as you can see, you're gonna miss half the story of, of this data and, and, and quite an important story too. Equally in this final example, there is an interaction effect in that there is a, some significant effects going on here, but where they are is, is, is determined by the um, dependence of, of these uh, main effects. So let's go back into our, our data and, and see how to analyze it um, using mixed models. So we're gonna go to general linear model and repeated measures. And our factor here is gonna be work. We have uh, five levels, as in yeah, five matches. And we're gonna go through and, and define them now. So let's copy across the data for our five matches. So that's our within subjects variable. And what makes it a mixed model is when we copy across our between subject factor, which is what position you play. So we'll look at some plots as well, and we'll put position on separate lines so we can look at the difference between forwards and backs. And then we'll, our variable of interest, we'll put on the horizontal axis, and you're gonna have to click out here to, to draw that graph. If we click on post hoc, now there's actually only two uh, positions, so there's no need to do post op. We'll we'll do that anyway, and we look at the um, the error message that, that come comes up there. And then finally, we've got options. So we'll just click across work and position. We want to compare main effects again. We're doing Bonferroni, and we'll just click uh, these measures for uh, display, and then OK. So here's our output. As we go down, we've got our usual descriptive statistics. 
and we've got our measure of sphericity, uh, which you can see has been violated here. So we have to read across the greenhouse geyser correction. And you can see our first main effect, which is work, and that's a within subject effect, um, is significant. So there is a significant effect of match number on, on how much work you, you do. And again, if we go down to our other main effect here, we've got our between subject effect, which is what position you play. And equally, you can see that the position you play has a significant effect on how much work you do. The other uh, measure was this interaction. And we can see here, again, there's a significant effect. So there, there is an interaction between uh, the position that you play in, at, and the match number. And so we're going to want to explore the data because it's got a little bit more to offer um, than the main effects will, will have us uh, just believe. And, and from the plot we asked it to, to produce, you can, you can see this interaction effect starting to, to happen. So as we work through some of the other boxes, we get a pairwise comparison. So this would be our Bonferroni adjusted pairwise uh, comparison, which is going to look at uh, match one for uh, work rate versus match two and, and, and so on. And you can see there's no significant difference between one and, and two, but there is between one and three and, and four and five. Uh, two, no difference with one, three or four, but there is a difference of five and, uh, and, and so on. But what this doesn't, this output doesn't give us is where the significant um, effects are um, along the graph. So we know that they're, they're significantly different, we just don't know where. And we have to go back in now and ask uh, SPSS to produce that as part of the output. So we're going to go into general linear model again and repeated measures. We go back, we can just click define because we've already stated what we want. And we're going to click this button here which is uh, paste. And what that does, it brings up the syntax which essentially is the code used to produce uh, the output we were just looking at. We're just going to manipulate this code a little bit more and ask it to do some of these comparisons. I'm just going to copy that and paste it down here. And where it, next to it says compare, I'm just going to ask it to compare position for me. And then I'm going to copy that whole line and then ask it to do the same, but this time for work. Then I'm going to highlight the, the whole lot and, and press play. And actually because I've highlighted the whole lot, it's produced um, this, the, the entire output. Obviously I could have just highlighted the additional bits I wanted to see. But let's go down to where those additional parts lie. And here we now have our pairwise comparison where we're able to look at the difference between forwards and backs uh, across each game. And you can see that um, in general that backs do more than, than forwards, significantly more across games one, two, three uh, and four, but not in game number five, which that, that, that graph showed us anyway. You can also look at um, forwards and whether they did more work in, in game one than, than two, three, four and five, uh, etc. And then again, the same for backs. So in terms of how we would report that data, well, if we go across to here, we're going to report that data in, 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 a, in a way similar to this. So we say that there was a significant difference in, in work across the five matches and a significant difference between position. And you can see here, the first thing we've done is report the two uh, main effects. And then we want to report the interaction effects. So there was a significant interaction between work and position. Um, and then um, with Bonferroni adjusted post hoc test revealing that across all matches except the fifth, um, um, backs perform significantly um, more work than forwards. So in terms of where the rest of this data come from, if you look at the first one, which is um, work, we've got the um, degrees of freedom. So we've got our 4 and 80 here. We've got our F value from the ANOVA, 23.76, our P value, and in here we've got our partial e to squared, which essentially is our effect size. Effect size ran over. And in previous videos we looked at um, effect sizes. We've also got the same for our between subject effect, so position. So we've got our 
different degrees of freedom, so our 1 and 20, we've got our F value, we've got our P value, and again we've got our um, effect size. And then this likewise for our um, interaction effect. So um, again, we've got all that data from, from the table here and mentioning that where the, the significant difference lies based on the Bonferroni um, uh, adjustment. And, and finally, if there was no interaction effect, there would, there would be no need to do the um, additional analysis that, that we did at the end. And whether you do pairwise comparisons or not just depends on whether you find uh, significant differences at, um, at this stage um, or not.